how did you um, meet Jeremiah and uh, what got you involved into promoting this wonderful movie? Because I didn't see you on screen, but you are so very passionate about it and these issues are very important to pretty much everybody, I think, should be important to us as atheist community as well. So how did you get involved? Okay, I shall answer that. Uh, my name is Steve Hill and I, I am a atheist comedian. Thank you, thank you. I do a atheist comedy and Jeremiah and I met at the blackout rally in New York City held by the, uh, sponsored by the black non-believers out of Atlanta and black atheists of America. And once I saw the documentary, <laughs> the first question I had for Jeremiah was, how are we gonna trick black people into watching this movie? <laughs> and basically, we've been together ever since getting this movie on as many eyes. Basically, initially for the atheist community, we're going to be screening this movie in April in Salt Lake City, Utah for the American Atheist Conference. Anybody here going? Good, good. I'll be performing and we'll be uh, screening the movie. And uh, the reason I'm an activist. We don't have to answer that, we know. Okay, great. Next. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to be moderating the Q&A, so in order to, to get everybody's question in in a, in a reasonable fashion, keep it short. If you have a comment, keep it shorter. I will cut you off. <laughs> and I hold the mic. Nobody touches the mic but me. I said nobody touches the mic but me. <laughs> okay. Okay, just, just a second before you start. Let me introduce everyone to... Uh, Someone I came to, to answer any theological type questions because uh, I know nothing about the Bible because I've never had any interest in reading it. So I would like uh, to ask my buddy Ryan Bell to stand up. He's a, he's a blogger. Everybody know Ryan? Yeah. So I'm, Ryan, I'm going to ask you to come up. Just in case we get into that church stuff, you can answer it. <laughs> Continue, sir. Yes. Uh, I didn't see any picture of Jesus to be dark color because Jesus and Muhammad and Moses, they came from the part that they don't have blue eyes and they don't have a white skin. But every church I saw, Jesus has blue eyes and white skin. And that's not true with where they came from. Why Jesus has to be blue skin and white color in all the churches? A Smurf, a Smurf guy. An avatar, he's an avatar. See, I'm, see, I'm glad I introduced you to Ryan before he asked that question, because the whole premise to me is unconscionable because I don't believe in any God, period. I don't give a if he's blue, purple, green with, with orange hair. I mean, it's just, I think it's simple. It's just a cultural appropriation of, of a deity to represent your people. So, I mean, clearly the historical Jesus was, you know, Middle Eastern man. And so any, any picture with the blue eyes just isn't culturally accurate. Right. Good answer. Really quick. Really quick. You didn't brought the subject of the virus religious virus in the Middle East that keeping people so oppressed and the dictatorship and the West and Israelis are Question. Really oppressing those people and they are 100 times more mosque than university over there. They okay, should have I, brought that subject also in the Middle East, what the religion is doing to people. Okay, I can, I can answer that. For one, Jeremiah cut this movie down to 94 minutes, it used to be almost two hours when, when he first started. When the, the version I saw was uh, an hour and like 54 minutes. So he had to cut this down, and I, I don't know if you know, noticed, but Jeremiah is African-American, so this movie comes from an African-American perspective. If we had to tackle the ills of religion all over the world, <laughs> this would be a marathon. <laughs> Someone else can make that movie. 
Yeah, yeah, let somebody else shoot that one. Right. Okay, quick question. What do you think is the significance of the criminal justice system, especially here in the United States, when it comes to African American oppression and uh, disadvantaged social status? Good, good question. Good question. Um, forgot for you guys that don't know, I spent ten years in, in the California Department of Corrections as an officer. I see that look on your face. <laughs> As an officer. <laughs> and and you, you guys think about this for a minute. In this country, America, you get free legal representation. Now, who, who made that up and who makes our laws? Attorneys. That's like job security. If you were dying in the street, you couldn't get free health care, but you get free legal assistance. Something is, is wrong with that. Now, our criminal justice system, like the state of California is at 163% capacity, over, overcrowding, and ironically, some sickness, some crazy sickness, a whole lot of African American inmates that I used to be around every day, they all find Jesus in prison. I can't answer that. Yeah, I was in jail for, for a month, and I think that as well. I did some research on that prior to being in jail, that there's just a disproportionate sentencing, especially drug convictions, you know, like a middle class male gets, does marijuana, maybe just gets rehab, and a black person does the same thing, gets 10 years in prison. Oh, yeah, the disparity in sentencing, yeah. But, yeah. Attorney Holder is working on that right now. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Oh, oh I, <laughs> force of habit. Yes, uh, Steve, this is one I think you can answer. Uh, I noticed in this film, as I've long noticed, that uh, the, uh, the going out to dancing at a nightclub and the singing and dancing in church Sunday morning, sa uh, Saturday night and Sunday morning, seemed to me to be pretty much the same thing. Do you think that a lot of the African Americans really get joy out of just singing and dancing and, and listening to music uh, uh, by going to church? Uh, that it's not so much religion? Yeah, but it's not exclusive to, to just us because you can go to white churches, Hispanic, Latino churches, and that portion of the program is always an uplifting experience for the, for the audience or for the suckers in the audience. <laughs> and. So, you know, it's not ex exclusive, but it makes people feel good. That's what people want to do is feel good, even though they have to use a fake delusional mind tricking, you know, Bible or something like that to help them. But, you know, yes, everyone right. wants to feel good. Right. I was brought up in a very state. <laughs> Thank you. I am. Um, I really enjoyed learning about the history of um, the connection between um, slavery and Christianity um, in the African American experience. Um, and um, in my experience, uh, I've had experiences where. Um, question? Yes, this is a question. It's leading up to a question. Question? <laughs> where I've gotten a lot of hostility. Um, when expressing my disbelief or my secularism from African Americans who were, who were religious, who never experienced, I think, uh, being around someone who didn't believe in God or, or who, didn't, who thought prayer was a waste of time. or you know, it, Me expressing my own opinion, I received a lot of hostility. So I was wondering how I can um, discuss you know, my opinion or how I can state my, you know, my position in a way that's culturally sensitive. And if you had advice about okay, that. Okay, let me, let me tell you something. First off, you have internet, texting on your phone, yeah. text them. Don't stand there in front of them and, and you're gonna, it's futile. It's, it's, it's to no one's advantage to argue with, no matter what ethnic group they belong to, about their God that lives in their head. 
Why would you? It, it would, you know, trying to explain the color red to a blind man. They'll, they'll never see it. You, you, yeah, that's an that's a exercise that I wouldn't recommend. Not unless you find it something, you know, some, some, that's fulfilling something within you to let them know that you're a non-believer. But like I said, it's just going to lead you back to nowhere because they'll never see it. So I wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't, wouldn't, I have no, you, could you tell them how to talk to black people about church? <laughs> I wouldn't do, I, yeah, it's, it's a no, no win. It's, yeah, no win. Yeah, yeah, you will get, you will get hurt talking about God. Believe that? Now that's, that's a joke that I can't even write. You, you get beat up talking about their God. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Because, because that's precisely my question. Mm -hmm. First, I want to thank you. This is a, a very yes. deeply passionate expression. Because I'm African American. Yes. So, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> but, we look alike. Yeah. Um, so, but that is precisely my question. Because um, you are opening a Pandora's box. And this is from my personal experience. African American Christian people are the meanest people I have ever met in my life. The most, the most so, judgmental. But, but I'm just, I'm just sticking. This is a message that needs to be heard. So you, you are aware that you are going to be confronted with a, a, an extreme amount of hostility, and I mean, it, this is this is serious stuff. So my right. question to you is, given the fact that it's a message that needs to be heard from a group of people that are hostile and angry, and to your credit, violent. So what is your game plan? Do you have massive security, CIA protection, <laughs> FBI? I mean, and that's being... I'm, I'm actually security. But, but, being on the, but on the real, how are you preparing yourself intellectually to be able to deal with the community that you are about to affront with this type of messaging? So that's, and I want to hear the game plan. Okay. I'll be there. You have my support, but you need, a, you also know you need a bulletproof vest. Right. We, so. we have, we're going to be very careful about where we go, who we talk to, who we see, who, 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 who gathers together to watch this. Like, for example, I'm an African American comedian that does political and atheist comedy. You won't see me performing over at the Comedy Union or any other the, the black clubs I've I've tried it it doesn't it as soon as you say something about god it's like the audience shuts down so we're going to try to to ease this documentary into the mainstream media without ruffling too many feathers and then after that we don't give a how many feathers we ruffle <laughs> because this message has to get out to save us Oh, we're we're looking for that person. We're 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 looking for uh, what's his name that does the the wormhole in the worm. Uh, yeah, we're we're looking for someone to come and and rescue us. You know, we we try to get Oprah, but she ain't into that. <laughs> she didn't even think we could enjoy a movie because we atheists. Don't but yeah, we yeah the we're, we're we're gonna we're, we're yeah we're we're looking. You know, there's. People who have made these sub subliminal signs of being, you know, being able to think further than church, like uh, Chris Rock and um, John Legend, you know, big names, smart people, talented people who could help us. But for right now, we haven't been able to reach them. We tried. Parents, go get your kids yeah. and bring them down for uh, lunch, because it's lunchtime and they're hungry upstairs. Um, hi, what I've, what's concerned me for a while, and especially after I just finished this book, The New Jim Crow, uh, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness, um, it, it was being read at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Verdugo Hills, but what's, what's bothered, it, it, this mass incarceration, and what's kind of bothered me before I even read this book, it's not too many black people ever come here. You have your own groups. And I, I asked one guy once, and he said, well, it's our culture. 
And, you know, I'm thinking gospel, gospel, I like gospel singing. And then and I thought that's kind of trite. Uh, maybe it's deeper than that, like slavery and right. segregation. But um, I, I think you need to join with as many white people as, uh, as for you. Yeah. That are for you. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what we're doing, really. Well, well, Seriously. I, see you I mean, here I've, today. I've, said, I've said that repeatedly yeah. to Jeremiah. Because one of, one of my best friends in the movement is uh, Dave Silverman, who's president of American Atheists Incorporated. Yeah. And I've tried to explain to him, it's like, man, we're gonna, we can't do this by ourselves. Right. So, yeah, yeah, we yes. have a lot of friends in the atheist community. Okay. James Underdown from yeah. right here. I mean, <laughs> all over the country, all over the country. But, okay. yeah, they're, yeah we're, they're helping, and <laughs> we're seeking their assistance. Great, great. Sorry, I forgot. Um, the toy loan uh, program that uh, AU is is uh, running right now, um, I get it about uh, avoiding direct uh, confrontational. Um, but the idea of uh, I'm asking what uh, you might, what your thoughts might be in terms of using the toys which uh, are, you know, a lot of kind of science, not exactly science, but, but creative uh, or problem-solving kind of thinking, uh, building things, that sort of thing. How could you use that maybe as a wedge, a non-confrontational wedge, uh, to, uh, you know, well, first you, break the tyranny of, yeah. of faith? Yeah, see, first you'd have to have parents that are receptive. Without, without the parents, allowing their kids like the, the toys playing so that leads us back to our first problem <laughs> the african american community the the females because we've noticed that the women in our group tend to keep this thing going i don't know it's if it's they are, they get lonely without a man but one thing they do have and one thing they'll always have, when there's no other man in their life, they have Jesus. You know, he's there to lean on, cry on, bitch to. It's a constant in their life. That's a man. So the women are really, really doing a disservice to our ethnic group. But it could, I mean, <laughs> we're trying everything we can. Trust me, comedy, movies, dancing, tap dancing, anything, to get, get, get us hooked, unhooked off this religion stupidity. Thank you. Um, by the way, these are the, are you, you going to ask a question? Yeah. Okay, cool. These, these are the last questions then because the pizza's okay. getting cold and I'm hungry. All right. Um, you're, as a comedian, you are probably in best to respond to my question uh, or statement. Um, apparently. Uh, Keep it concise, please. I, uh, I, I'm talking about. The fact that subversive to the society are programs like The Simpsons, Family Guy, Cleveland, and uh, American Dad. And Seth MacFarlane happens to be an atheist, by the way. And, uh, and when you get into things like the Church of the Fonz, as, ridicul uh, as ridiculous as it was, uh, just give me some of your uh, takes on using this mass media uh, phenomenon of comedy uh, it's a subversive force. Okay. As, as far as a comedian doing religious jokes or an African American comedian doing religious jokes? We're all African. We're all African. Yes, because we're from Africa. Right. I, I have that shirt, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> you said the, the, the question or your statement or your questionable statement. The question basically was, as a comedian, how... How you respond to what those shows are doing in that to advance the Oh, you know what, sir? I don't even watch those shows. Okay. Sorry, I, I really don't. I spend most, since I do political humor, I spend almost all of my time watching the news and what's going yeah. on. Okay. Real, real life stuff. Real, and real TV. Cleveland show is all African American. Okay, I'm going I'm to have to catch an episode of that for you. Then come back, and we'll, we'll talk about it. 
Um, I have a question. I don't know if I miss it uh, during the, the movie, but I would like to know the opinion in the context of that movie of the uh, black leadership during the civil rights movement. Do you want to know your my? opinion of the leadership on the civil right movement? Because they yeah. were the ones who promoted and did a progressive and a positive uh, uh, struggle. So how we reconcile that well, positive part of the church with all the negatives? Yeah, but like Dr. Carruthers stated in the in the documentary, you could count on two hands the number of churches that actively participated in Dr. King's civil rights movement. Most of them were, were afraid. They were scared. Intimidation. Now, you guys talk about terrorism. When people are bombing your churches in the South, that's, that's terrorism. But we never, we never look at it like that because I guess we don't call other Americans terrorists. But you know, you, you, can't fault, you can't fault all the churches that wouldn't go along. You could look at that leadership and say you're a weak man. But, you know, I, I wouldn't go back and criticize anything in the 60s. I, you know, I, I just think on a more positive note, <laughs> we'll keep moving forward in 2014 and it's high time, way past time, to get off of this church stuff. Can I make one comment? Yes, Ryan. I would say too that the prosperity gospel has taken over um, the black church in particular since that time. So that's sort of a recent uh, development since the 60s and since the civil, right mo civil rights movement. And uh, you, you have a lot more um, African-American churches that are, are really driven by what you saw there on the screen of like your bills are being paid as you pray for, you know, his bills are being paid, you know, the preacher. Um, but but that's, about, that's about it. And that's also in white churches. There are big white megachurch. Joel Osteen's church in Houston, Texas, for example, is another example of a white, predominantly white congregation that is also... Um, really entrenched in this prosperity gospel that, that God's gonna you know, bless you with riches and fortune if you just you know, come to church and bow to the, to the preacher. Plant the seed. Real, 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 real quick, Norman, just two quick ones. Two quick ones. Paul, you got 4.3 seconds, go. I a question. Did any of the religious subjects that you interviewed in this film end up converting after being made example of by the director? Good question. Well, ML, MLK3, his, uh, one of his top assistants came out to Jeremiah, said, man, you, you, you got me thinking, I can't, I, and he, he gave up, he quit. Wow. He quit. Martin Luther King's junior assistant quit and came out to Jeremiah, like, where, where have you guys been? That's it's about time. That's a great story. But yeah, people, yeah, people will, you know, that's why I fell in love with this documentary, because it lets you see the stupidity of what we are blindlessly walking around doing instead of, you know, getting educated, instead of staying out of the criminal justice system and doing what we need to do to survive because it's not about race, it's not about religion, none of that trash. It's about money in America. Yeah. Capitalistic society, this is what we get. Good. There you go. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. Put very eloquently. I just wanted to tell you I love the movie. Um, and also do, like, um, how are you going at it towards getting other young black atheists as, as myself, getting committed to helping the cause for this? Because, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of us young people were, like, we're, you know, they're, they're naive to the whole, you know, religion thing to me. It's like, it's total bullshit. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and me being young, I'm 20, and I'm 25, so I've been getting a lot of, you know, ridicule for it. You know, parents, you know, um, my mom threatened to kick me out, talk about you don't believe in God. Yeah. You know, yeah. females. Oh, right. oh, females is um, like, you know, I feel like my whole life is over towards dating black women, right. most likely, because, you know, as soon as you tell them you're atheist, right. you know, right. they're not fucking with you. So. Yeah. <laughs> so how is you know so how are you going at it is or do you need help you know spreading the word like you know how can I help okay uh, would you happen to know Bill Gates 
Because <laughs> we get we get we can use some we can use some cash right now. No, no. What 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 we're doing is setting up a college tour right now, and we're we're trying to reach the youth, man. Because you know that's that's where it's at. Because they they've come up now in an information age where they can get on and Google and find things out and they're just not going for the Bible. So if, if we can nip it in the butt with like college age, get them to stop this insanity of teaching their children to go and, and praise some guy up in the sky who grants wishes. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. The youth. That's where the movement is. And, and how you can help, go to... Go to uh, I'm trying to think of the website. ContradictionTheMovie.com, I believe that's what it is. You on there? Okay, yeah. Go, go there and just donate. Do whatever, you, do whatever you can. Get other people. When this movie comes out, buy a copy. Mass produce it and give it to every black person you know. I'm already trying to do it. All right, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out.